everyone and welcome back. I'm Diane Dizial and today I'm starting the bodice lesson from my little PDF document. Before starting my lesson, I want to take a few minutes to talk about the paper I'm using. Many of you asking me what kind of paper I use, especially the one that has two colors, like this pink or the turquoise, that is color on one side and white on the other. These ones are simply wrapping paper. For the white paper, I buy many kinds, different width, but this one is a good one that you could find easily in many stores or even online. It is completely white and the quality, the thickness is pretty good. I'm going to show you a picture of my working table. And if you're interested, I'm also going to put all the measurements. Now, when you trace the line on your block, it would be good that you put your bodices side seam next to the side seam. And if you did get my little booklet, it would be nice if you put the information on the same side that I'm presenting it. For both of these, we have two darts, one at the shoulder and one at the waist. If we look at the front, the one with the deepest neckline, we only have one pivot that belongs to both dart, but in the back you have a pivot for the shoulder dart and you have another pivot for the waist dart. Today, since it's the first class, we're going to do the style, the basic style 200. That is exactly the block with little modifications so we could call it a pattern. And of course, we add the seam allowance. And the reason why we're doing the basic pattern today is that for most or for many of the other style, we'll be able to reuse this same pattern. Now, as usual, we're going to trace all around each one of the piece. You don't need to align them. You just need to keep a little space in between, more or less an inch and a half or maybe three centimeter. Since we know that we're just going to do the basic bodice pattern, no development, no elongation. The only thing is to keep a little space at the center back. And we're also going to indicate both pivots. Same thing on the front, we indicate the pivot. We're going to start with the front and the modification. It's only to separate the pivot. We need a pivot for the shoulder dart and a pivot for the waist. That modification is to make sure that you're not going to sew both dart to the same point because it's not nice. We usually shorten the dart, so moving the, a pivot towards the top for the shoulder dart and towards the bottom or the waist for the waist dart. It's going to give you a little more fabric for the bust level and it's also going to be nicer for the sewing. The measurement that we move the pivot when we separate them is about two centimeter or three quarter of an inch. The way we move the pivot is by finding the middle line. So I'm going to measure the shoulder dart, find the middle, measure the waist dart and find the middle. Then you could just trace dotted line, one for the shoulder dart and one for the waist dart. Then, like I was saying, we're going to separate the pivot in two and we're going to measure on that line two centimeter or three quarter of an inch towards the shoulder and from the original pivot two centimeter or three quarter of an inch towards the waist. Now we're going to trace the final dart from this new point all the way to the notch that we already have for the dart on the contour.
Now, one very important thing is that as soon as you move the original pivot from its position, you must fold the dart again and correct the contour line. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to fold the side of the dart that is closer to the center front for both of them. When you do fold your dart, don't be shy folding more than what you really need. It's only going to make your task easier. Now look how I lift my paper exactly at the new pivot and I'm going to just bring the first line that I fold over the second one. Now what you must look at is your shoulder line. Here the correction is very little and on top of that I use a tick marker. It's maybe a millimeter or two or one sixteen of an inch. The other thing that might have changed is the jog or the arrow of the dart. It could be very little but you must change it so your sewing will be perfect. With the tracing wheel you just trace. Here again I just have a very tiny modification. Here again you have to make your paper stop the folding at the new pivot and we're going to bring the first line over the second one. Here you're not going to see uh, nothing move vertically because the waistline was a straight line square with the grain and the dart was even on both sides. But we must trace just to make sure that the jog of the dart didn't change. And it's a very tiny little correction. But like I was saying, this is a good habit to take because sometimes you're going to have bigger difference. Now what we have left to do is to put the punch holes. We put it one centimeter or three eighths of an inch inside the dart on the center line. The grain line for my bodice is going to be parallel to my center front. This is my style 200 and the size is a size 10. This front piece is going to be cut on the fold of the fabric. So cut one time in self. Now I'm going to put my seam allowance all around except on the center front. Another little detail that I want to talk about on the front block is that you must have a 90 degree from center front at the neck for about five millimeter or I would say quarter inch. This little part is 90 degree because we don't want a v-neck or we don't want a point coming up either. And you should also have a 90 degree at the waist from the center front for the same reason. Then you could cut all around. Now I'm going to do my notches, so two notches for the shoulder dart, the armhole notch, two notch for the waist dart, and I'm going to do two half notch, one at the waist and center front, and another one at the neck and center front. Now we're ready for the back and the first thing we'll do is the same that we did on the front. We will find the center of the waist dart and the center of the shoulder dart. Then you're going to trace the center line for the waist dart and for the shoulder dart. Now for the waist dart, I'm going to do just like we did for the front. I'm going to move the pivot two centimeter or three quarter of an inch towards the waist. Then I'm going to just retrace my waist dart. For the shoulder dart in the back, I usually don't move the pivot since they already have separate pivot. So I'm just going to retrace it. 
we have to think about an opening we cannot do a fold of fabric on the front and on the back we wouldn't be able to get into the top I decide for this one I'm going to do an overlap to have a button closure for my example I'm going to do an overlap of two centimeter I will come back in another video to explain in detail how to do the overlap, how to calculate the placement of the button and the buttonholes. For now, I'm just going to elongate the waistline and the neckline 90 degree with the center back. Now we're going to place the punch holes one centimeter or three eighth of an inch inside the dart for the waist dart and one centimeter or three eighth of an inch inside of the shoulder dart also. Now I'm going to put the seam allowance and this time we really go all around. Now we could cut all around. Here I cut without uh, folding my dart because I know it's not going to change since the center of my dart is parallel. It's even on both sides, there's no angle, but it's a good habit to just fold the dart. doesn't matter if you change it or not. So here I'm folding first the side of the dart that is closer to the center. After folding, I would cut just to make sure that my, the jug of the dart has the right shape. Same thing for the shoulder dart. Now to have more precision for the notch of the darts, what I suggest is that you do your folding like we did, and then you fold only two layers like that. Then you could do your notch with the two layer at the same time. So you do have the notches for, the, for both dart. On top of that, you're going to have the notch for, at the armhole. And I'm going to ask you two more notches at the center back, exactly at the center back, waist and neckline. Now I'm going to trace my grain line parallel to my center back. This style is still my style 200. This piece is a size 10. I'm going to cut it one pair in a self fabric. That's it, we complete the first pattern that is also the block. If you did your own construction for the block, that's what you got also. So you have to do a little modification and you'll be ready. Cut it in fabric, sew it and try it on. That's it for today. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. And I see you next time.